Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com. Now for a while, I've been wanting a steady rest for my lathe. Uh, for any of you guys that have followed my lathe series, when I got it, it uh, basically had a production cross slide on it, had no tool post, um, was missing the clamp and stuff for uh, the tailstock. Uh, but anyways, I've got a working lathe, but you know, I would like to have a few attachments. Now I was going to build or make my own steady rest, but now I bought this one here off the uh, website that we all know and love, um, eBay, um, and it's, it was a little cheaper than I would normally see. Now, the uh, does work, right? Um, other than there are going to be some things I'll have to take care of. For example, uh, the set screws are kind of rusted in place, so I'll have to get them loose. Uh, it needs a good stripping. The, uh, the washer here. This one's busted. I'll have to make some washers. I'm missing missing the heavy washer down here at the bottom. Um, so I'm going to have to make a washer. And while I'm making washers, I'll make a couple extra because my um, gear post on my uh, one of my change gears um, needs a washer too. So, And then the other thing that's uh, sort of wrong here is that uh, it has mild steel fingers. Now I've ordered some leaded brass. Now I know that's probably not the best thing to use, but I uh, did order some leaded brass um, to replace those with. So there we have it. So I think what I want to do is I'm going to, um, it's fairly clean, um, so I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, strip what I can strip off of it um, and then uh, strip the paint and then soak it in some uh, um, evaporate rust and see what happens. So I'll uh, bring you back here in just a few minutes. Okay, I have the steady rest taken apart. Uh, it didn't take much to get it down to its uh, uh, pieces. You know, I was worried about stuff being rusted solid. A little, uh, little uh, PB blaster and and uh, a wrench is all it took. So now, for those of you who um, are just kind of curious, there are two pins in here, right? There's a hinge pin here. This is a light press fit into the lower. Uh, casting free fit on the top casting um, just uh, very easy to drive out the other pin here of course um, is just a slide fit in the bottom casting that allows the bolt to pivot so so really other than that uh, th there's two main body castings let's see if I can get this in frame there's, a, there's the bottom okay and the top and then there are three long set screws uh, that will that go in and and uh, push the fingers. Okay, and then of course you know your fingers slide in these grooves here, and then you got some small set screws and some washers that have the bottoms cut off that uh, allow you to lock the um, the finger into position after you get it adjusted. So that's it. Other than uh, you don't know, have the uh, the base casting or you know the clamp casting here and clamp bolt. So it's all apart. So I think what I'm gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna degrease these parts and um, I'm gonna put some stripper on them and get the paint stripped off of them. And then uh, after I get the paint stripped off, I'll I'll bring you back in. Okay. So I have had my parts <clears throat> soaking in the um, citrus strip now for. Uh, about 12 hours. Normally I let them go about 24, but I'm off today. I have to leave in a little while for a uh, doctor's appointment, but anyway, this is what I use. I use this to strip my uh, mill, and you'll see more videos on that coming up. Now, citrus strip, seem, I've had pretty good success with it, right? But uh, I slathered on, and, uh, and then I covered in plastic to try to keep it from drying out, and then leave it on there for 24 hours. So let's just take a look here and see what we got. It's interesting. It seems that uh, the citrus strip has reacted with this little plastic do that again here. But now, as you can see, that's going to come right off. And I'm not going to bore you with this bit here. I'm just going to strip this off and clean it up. And then when I get it all cleaned up, I'll bring you back. So, 
See you in a few minutes. Okay, well I've got the uh, paint stripped off of the parts. Um, but I, before I show those to you, I'm gonna talk about this little tray. This little tray, um, the place where I work, they're filled with surgical stuff, right? And uh, when they expire, they have to throw them out. So the uh, nurse that does that is kind enough to save these trays for me. Now this is the first time that I've used um, a tray like this here to strip parts, but I noticed that the citrus strip uh, was melting or attacking the plastic. So I look down here to see what it is, and it is, I don't know if that shows up, it's uh, number six, and it's PS, which is polystyrene, you know, the stuff they make drinking cups out of. So uh, just note to self, uh, citrus strip will attack polystyrene. So I know that now in the future, I'm assuming that I remember that. All right, so let me get the parts out here and let's take a let's take a look at them. Okay, so the castings, the clamp casting, uh, or you know the body castings and clamp casting, um, and the odd and and hardware, it's all been stripped of paint. And uh, you're seeing here where we're starting to get a little bit of flash rust, but that's okay because I'm going to put these in the rust tank. There's some spots that uh, of paint here that have uh, are clinging on, cling on. <laughs> a Star Trek reference, right? Hey, speaking of Star Trek. Any of you guys watching uh, Star Trek Picard or Star Trek Discovery? Uh, I've been watching them both, and um, you know I'm, I'm kind of liking them, really. Um, Picard, though, is really much darker than uh, I would, I've ever uh, seen a, uh, an episode of Star Trek B. But anyway, that's a side point. Just put down in the comments. So uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to get a container and put these parts in, and then uh, we're gonna. Fill that up full of uh, evapor rust and let it set for 12, 14 hours or whatever, just to take any rust off. And then we'll clean. And then I'll clean those up. And then we'll really give a close examination of the parts and uh, go from there. So let me get a container and I'll be right with you. Okay. So this is one of those little plastic totes. I think they're technically they call them shoe boxes, and you can buy them at Walmart. They're really cheap, but man, they are just they're handy as handy could be around the shop. So I have all the uh, bits and pieces and parts to the steady rest um, in this little tote, and I want to put some evapor rust in. I should have been more prepared. It's actually over here on the other side of the shop. Now, this evapor rust has been used, so uh, you can reuse it. Uh, it's normally not that dark. It's sort of a light brown color, but I'm just going to cover these parts in evapor rust just like this. Oh good, there was enough in that one. Awesome. Alright, so uh, I'm going to let those sit uh, probably uh, for several hours. Uh, I might come out tonight. It's, uh, it's about 10 o'clock in the morning now. I think I'll probably let these sit until oh, maybe 7 or 8 o'clock tonight and check on them and if everything is de-rusted real nice, I'll carry on and otherwise we'll just wait. So in the meantime, I'm just going to put one of these lids on here and snap that on and we'll come back to it later. So I'll see you in just a few minutes. Okay, so the parts have been soaking in evapor rust for oh, about 12 hours or so. And you'll see that it's, it's taken all the rust off. So I'm going to take these in and clean these up real good and then we'll come out and take a closer look. So I'll catch you here in just a few minutes. Okay guys, everything has been scrubbed up. I'm going to have to um, get these uh, primed and painted before they start to flash rust. Uh, but fortunately I only got about 35 percent humidity in my shop. It's pretty low. Although, you know, I will get a little. So I'll uh, wipe these down real good with some uh, mineral spirits and let them dry and then I will get them get them painted up so except for the uh, uh, machined uh, surfaces obviously so I hope I need to pay attention make sure I got that in the frame so you see they turned out pretty good like I said if I wait too long I'll get some flash rust make sure I got it castings are in pretty good shape now there is something I do want to talk about with the uh, hardware and um, just empty these out here. So generally I want to use reuse the hardware if I can. Uh, you know I'll clean it up. This hasn't really been cleaned up yet but now this here is the uh, 
the bolt for the clamp, it's fine. Of course, the nut, okay, and a heavy washer for it. Now, the swivel nut here is fine. This bolt is fine. I need to make a heavy washer to put on top of the bolt. So that's all good. But now, and of course this is the this is the hinge pin, it's fine. Okay, so essentially we have um, a long set screw that adjusts the arm, right, in and out of the uh, steady. Okay, it goes through here. And with that goes a, uh, as a jam nut, right? So once you get in position, you can jam it down. And then on the side, where the fingers would go through here, remember we had these, these uh, uh, key stock mild steel uh, fingers, right? Well, these little bolts would go in here, right, along with this flat washer, and we'd clamp them in. Now these are heavy washer, but you see those washers are cut. Let's see. Get you in the frame here. These washers are cut so that if you have a really large piece, the washer won't interfere with the with the piece that you're trying to get turned. So one of these washers are split and broke. So I have to make at least one of those and I need to make another heavy washer. Um, when I make these heavy washers, I'm going to make a few because I need uh, I need one for uh, a gear stud too. But now here is uh, kind of what I'm going to talk about. These are 5 16 inch um, by 18 thread set screws and the heads are 5 16 of an inch, right? These, if you look real close, they're not really, I don't know what these were. I think these were a bolt that somebody ground to make, uh, try to make square headed screws, right? You can really tell on these, see, you can see the corners are lopped off, right? Like it maybe it was a hex bolt. Same way with this one. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do here is uh, I've picked up some 3 8 key stock, right? Um, of course, it's chrome plated, or not chrome plated, but it's a uh, it's plated, zinc plated. That I'm going to go ahead and turn new set screws out of and new bolts out of. And the reason why I went with that is the wrench on my lathe. This wrench right here is kind of universal, right? It fits the tool post. It fits the the nut fits the uh, clamp on the uh, tail stock, right? You'll see it fits the clamp there, right? It's just just what it is. And um, so I think what I want to do is go ahead and make nuts out of 3 8 because all the square headed bolts are all 3 8 on my lathe. So I'll turn uh, turn these down to 5 16 thread, thread them, um, 5 16 18 and and that way they all match. That's, that's what I'm going to do. So I think the next thing I'm going to do um, now before any rusting sets in, I'm going to go ahead and get these things uh, wiped down with some mineral spirits and uh, get a coat of paint on them. And then I guess I'll bring you back when I got some paint on or got something else to show. So through the magic of uh, video, that should just be uh, in just a second. Okay, guys, everything has been painted and uh, the new uh, hardware that I talked about uh, being made uh, it has been made. Recall that I, that, uh, I said that the, uh, the uh, steady rest had these um, zinc plated uh, mild steel fingers which I wanted to uh, replace with something a little better. So I've uh, got three, uh, three pieces of leaded uh, 360 brass here to use. And um, the other thing that I, I, I'm pretty sure that I mentioned, my lathe, um, the compound swivel uh, bolts, the saddle lock, um, the tailstock lock, you know, they all use the same wrench, right? And the wrench, um, the lantern tool post, you know, has a 3 8 square headed screws or 11 16 nuts, right? So, um, the hardware that was on this thing was 5 16 inch set screws, right? With 5 16 heads, so it was an odd head. The um, 
the small set screws, 516 set screws, um, look like they were made from maybe some hex bolts. I got one here, probably show you that. Okay, maybe. You see how the corners, so I'm guessing they were ground maybe from hex bolts. Not sure. Um, you know, I had had some broken hardware, right? So I went ahead and made made new ones. Um, the lock nuts again. You know, I don't know what size they are, but I wanted I wanted to fit my universal wrench here, right? My I call this my Sauron wrench. If you guys are familiar with Lord of the Rings, you know the he had one ring to rule them all. I want one wrench to rule them all. So. Um, the only other piece that I made was the clamp bolt. I went ahead and made an, one with an oversized head, right? It's 11 16 just like uh, the nuts. Of course, made 11 16 jam nuts. And I made new heavy washers for the finger clamps. And of course, I made new heavy washers because I was missing one. Um, I went ahead and made a few. And because uh, I needed one for my um, gear stud from the gear train on the side of the lathe, and then of course everything is all painted up with the uh, paint scraped off of the areas that you know were machined. So the paint that I'm using is Velspar Anti-Rust Armor. Now this is a um, enamel-based paint, I think, uh, oil-based enamel. Let's see if I can get it in the thing. I bought this at Lowe's. This is what I was painting my um, um, painting my uh, Burke number four mill with, and I still got plenty of it. So I, I went ahead and used that. That's uh, um, just being you know resourceful. Okay, so let me uh, show you how this goes together. Just simply because um, it's just an in interest of you know because I've covered all the stuff for the other bits and pieces of the lathe. So we'll start out here with, and hopefully this will tell you what. Let me let me get the camera zoomed in, and and maybe we can get it a little closer. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the hinge together, right? And it just slides in there like this. Need to line up the holes. Get my hand out of the way here. Like so, and then here's the hinge pen. Just going to uh, drive that in. Need to get this lined up. This was a light. This was a light press fit. So let me uh, let me get where I can see it, and I'll bring you right back. Okay, I got it started through the other bit. So let me just drive this down. Okay, that's all this to that. That's hinged and ready to go. All right, so um, the fingers, of course, just slide in the track, right? Set so screw with a jam nut. Of course, just in here. All right, then we have a uh, cut washer with a small bolt. These serve to uh, clamp the fingers in. And they're cut, I guess, to get just to give you the largest possible um, diameter through the steady you can get. course my Sauron wrench right lock it down keeps the finger from moving of course lock washer here and everything's locked in place it's not going anywhere all right so the other ones install exactly like that the 
hinge or the clamp is simply just a barrel with a sl uh, free sliding fit that fits in here just like this and then of course the 3 8 bolt with a heavy washer threads in there and then we'll clamp it down easy peasy and then last but not least um, the only thing left is the bed clamp square headed wash or square headed bolt slides through through the casting heavy washer and of course heavy nut and that's uh, that's the extent of it that's uh, that's all there is to it um, let me uh, get the last little bits in there and we'll come over to the lathe and see how it looks okay guys there you have it the uh, steady rest has been all reconditioned uh, new hardware made for it painted up um, well, it looks nice I think uh, but then again you know I'm a little biased right and I think we're ready to go I think I can uh, now turn some long stuff and and I'm all set now I probably uh, will give this a week or two to for the enamel to really finish harden up before I use it and abuse it too much but uh, but now you know looking at that <clears throat> hmm I think poor old Bertha needs a paint job you know what do you guys think so all right well let me uh, bring the camera over in here and and got a couple things that I want to share with you and then uh, I'll let you go hey guys thanks for following along in my Atlas 10F lathe series you know when I got this lathe um, it was missing a lot of stuff and it's come a long way and it's and now it's uh, you know able to make its own parts and and stuff like that uh, but there is uh, I do want to give a shout out and uh, maybe you can call this an endorsement um, the, I mean I bought the materials but I'm very I'm so happy with the company that uh, I just want to share it uh, so I'm sure many of you guys uh, especially here in the US are familiar with hobbymetalkits.com well Bernie you know uh, is the man that runs that and uh, he had a fire back in December and right on Christmas I think and uh, he thought it was gonna shut him down but there was such a outcrying of uh, support that uh, he was uh, he decided to stay in it and uh, so um, there's uh, you know if you call Bernie you can actually get some stuff that uh, is not listed on his website for example I got some uh, heavy angle and and I got this right here this 11 uh, 60 uh, 11 16 uh, leaded um, 12 L 14 hex stock to make my jam nuts and stuff out of of course he's got brass he's got he's got um, all kinds of stuff but the the big thing is though uh, if you find that you need something and he doesn't have it listed on his website give him a call the the, the phone number is on uh, the website and he's got email contact contact Bernie um, and see what he can do for you uh, because I tell you what he really came through for me very very nice man um, and uh, like I said it, it, this is not a paid endorsement it's just me endorsing him because I'm very happy with the service it, it's kind of like Black Rifle Coffee, right? I, I suggest everybody buy Black Rifle Coffee because it's just a wonderful product and the proceeds go to, uh, uh, some of the proceeds go to help vets, right? And that's important. Um, Bernie, he's been in uh, the metal market, I think he, I forget how many years, 50 years, <laughs> you know, a long time. And uh, he understands that uh, for the hobby guy like me, uh, that uh, especially if I'm, if you're in a, metal desert which you know there's not a lot of places I can get metal um, it, he he definitely caters to us and the shipping is is more than reasonable the shipping was as great I uh, ordered a bunch of stuff I think it was ten dollars flat rate and this is uh, uh, March of 2020 uh, but anyway that's what I want to say so look if uh, hey if this series has been helpful to you uh, leave me a comment down in the uh, down in the comment section you know because you know I've put out a, quite a few videos on the Atlas 10F series if um, if you have questions about the Atlas that maybe the 10F at least uh, let me know and, and I'll try to answer I do have some documentation so if some of you guys are looking for documentation again just shoot down the uh, comments there and let me know if, uh, if they're entertaining or helpful please consider uh, liking sharing subscribing and if you subscribe hit the bell I uh, will you'll be notified when I release another video 
Uh, now 2020 is my year of loose ends is what I'm calling it. I got a bunch of outstanding projects that need to get done. One of them is my Kenneth Wells uh, stationary engine. I got to get my Burke mill together. I still have a uh, uh, a, a couple plaques to cast and some other things that I just want to get done this year. So hang out with me and and uh, and we'll see what we can get done. So hey, other than that, have a blessed day.